Does your guitar playing look and sound like a beginner despite the fact that you feel like you should have the basics nailed by now? Today, I'm gonna to talk about four tips that I wish someone had told me when I was starting my guitar playing journey. Hello folks, my name is Lee Townsend and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I'm going to go over four tips that I think will help you level up your guitar playing and take you from beginner to intermediate. If you're already at intermediate or advanced level, I would probably skip over this video and come back next week. You're welcome to stick around but this video is really for beginners. If you're new here and you haven't seen the channel before and you're interested in guitar and music related content here on YouTube, please consider subscribing by hitting the subscribe link down below as it helps this channel grow and it helps these videos get seen by more people. Okay, with the YouTube stuff out of the way, on to the first of the tips today, which is gonna be constant strumming. And what I mean by that, I'm gonna start with a little bit of a story. Quite often when I'm playing live, at the end of my set, I'll get asked by people if they can have a go on my guitar. I don't know why people ask that, but it happens more than you'd think. I'll finish a set and someone will come over to me and go, yeah, great show. Am I all right to have a go on your guitar? And I'll be like, yeah, sure. Whatever. If they've not had too much to drink, I'll let them get on with it. And you can tell the ones that are beginners straight away because they'll do something like this. And for this example, I'm going to play a little bit of Wonderwall by Oasis. I haven't got a capo, so it's in the wrong key, but you'll get the idea of what I'm going for. So they'll do something that'll sound a little bit like this. And you can see that it doesn't sound that terrible, but it looks so awkward. And straight away, within seconds, you can see that that person is really robotic and doesn't really know what they're doing. It's not got any feel whatsoever. So I think what they're doing wrong here isn't so much about knowing the strumming pattern or being comfortable understanding the rhythm or whatever. I think they've got that bit nailed, but they're trying to use down and up strokes one after the other to do like a down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up kind of thing. And a good technique, a good way of combating this, um, a practice technique, you could call it, is to take the tempo of the song, mute all the strings with your left hand, assuming that you're right-handed, mute all the strings and play quarter notes in the tempo of the song. So roughly that kind of tempo. And this, obviously this is just for this song. Change those into eighth notes. And then switch that up again into 16th notes. And that's what the strumming hand should be doing, essentially, over this song. And when there's no strum on one of those sort of beats, you should just take your hand off the strings and miss them. So it should look and sound something like this. So you can see how much more natural that looks and how much more flow that it's got. And the other thing is, if you're going to be singing, if you're using the guitar as an accompanying instrument for your voice, you're going to find it a lot easier to be able to sing and play at the same time because you're not going to be concentrating so hard on that robotic strumming thing that you've got going on. So I think that's a really good habit to get into straight off the bat. So that's tip number one constant strumming. Tip number two is left hand muting. And again, this is assuming that you're right handed. What I mean is muting certain strings with your fretting hand so that you can play all of the strings with your strumming hand. So when we're beginners, we all learn that this is an E and you play all six strings. This is an A and you play only five of the strings because this E doesn't fit. It kind of fits, but it sounds a bit muddy. And then this is a D and you only play the four strings because the E and the A don't sound good with it, so just four strings, but if you play them all, it sounds a bit awful. So what all guitar players will do at a certain level is they'll start to mute the unwanted strings with this hand in some way. So a D chord, for example, I'll mute with my thumb. With I'll mute the E and the A strings with my thumb, like so. So that enables me to just play all of the strings. And the A, I'll mute the E string with my thumb. And it 
enables me to just concentrate on that strumming pattern, keep that rhythm going without having to think about which strings I'm missing with this hand, because that's really tough when you're trying to use a pick and you're singing at the same time and you're going for the whole thing. It's really tough to try and miss two strings out of four when you're strumming like this. So get into that habit as early as possible of training your hand to mute certain strings. And that's not limited to your thumb either. For example, when I'm playing a B minor chord, I've trained my finger to automatically touch the bottom E string and mute it so that I'm able to play all the strings. And that works with any bar chord that's got that A minor shape or the A shape. I'm muting that E string all the way up with the, the tip of my first finger. So again, a really, really good habit to get into, which will help your guitar playing come across as a lot more advanced than it probably already is. So that was tip number two. Tip number three is gonna be knowing where the notes are on the fretboard. Now this might sound really daunting at first, but it's gonna be an essential skill that you're gonna need once you start to play with other musicians. And I think it makes sense to learn this as early on as possible, particularly the E string and the A string, because these are fundamental positions where once you start learning how to play chords further up the neck or whatever, and also when you start to learn how to solo. And it's not actually as difficult as you might think because you've got to remember, you're only learning up to the 12th fret because from that point onwards, it starts over. So being able to go E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, all the way up to the 12th fret on the E string and then A, A sharp, B, C, C sharp, D, all the way up to the 12th fret on just two strings is going to allow you to do things like know that on the seventh fret of the E string is a note of B. There's a B chord. On the fourth fret of the A string is a C sharp. There's a C sharp chord. Being able to find those things that quickly is a fundamental skill that sets intermediate apart from the beginners. And you've got to remember as well, once you've learned those two strings, the next two strings are just the same but two frets up. So if you know that an F is on the first fret of the E string, finding that on the D string is just two frets up. So the third fret of the D string, you've got the same note. And the same goes with the A string as well. If you want to find a note on the G string, find it on the A and it's two frets up. So you know that a C sharp is on the fourth fret. So two frets up, same note, just an octave higher. So realistically, once you've learned the E and the A strings, you've got the next two strings nailed and the thinnest string is just another E. So you've got all, you've got five strings there sorted by learning two and then you've just got the B to worry about, which, you know, you can do that at a later date if you want, once you start learning how to solo. But I think that's a fundamental thing that you should be starting to do at as early a stage as possible, just so that when you get to needing that information, you're not hitting a brick wall and having to start all this theory stuff again. Just uh, my two cents on knowing where the notes are on the fretboard. So that's tip number three. And finally, tip number four, is one that takes me back a little bit to the story I was saying about before when people always want to play my guitar at the end of my shows, and that is bending accuracy. And a lot of people, they'll learn a pentatonic scale and they'll try and solo using that pentatonic scale to whatever's playing in the pub that I've been playing in. And they'll be sat there with my guitar and they'll go, It really is like having teeth pulled. I mean, it's something that's so important. If you're going to bend a string, know where you're bending to. There's a reason why John Mayer, John Frusciante, Mark Knopfler, and all these guitarists, Dave Gilmore, are renowned for being so good at what they do. And part of that is accuracy, particularly bending accuracy. So can you imagine John Mayer's band behind him starting to play Gravity? The organ player's there, the drummer's starting that beat. Bam and he comes in, John Mayer comes in like. I think the audience would run away, to be honest, if they did that. So you need to know where you're bending to. So in this instance, you're, you're bending up to that 12th fret there. So if you know that you're going up two frets, match that note. 
And a good way of practicing that is literally by doing that. Play a note, go down two frets and bend to it. Get used to how far you have to bend to reach the note. And don't forget that sometimes you're actually wanting to bend just one fret. So if you're doing like a blues thing. That interval there is just one fret. So you know that you're going to want to do a. Just bend one note up. So you can do the same thing. Play the note. and bend up to it on the next fret. So find the note, bend up to it, but find the note. And just use that as an exercise to sort of get used to the feel of how far you've got to go to reach certain notes. But this bending between notes and things is like having teeth pulled, it really is. So it's another fundamental thing that I think once you start to learn how to solo, once you start to learn the scales and things like that it's um a really fundamental skill that you're going to need to be able to make it sound like you know what you're doing and bonus tip at the end of this video uh, before we go is if you know how to name those notes on the fretboard particularly on the first two strings you're able to find which pentatonic scale keys should be playing in so if you've got a song that's in A, for example, you know that the A, um, the A note is the fifth fret on the E string. So you know that the, the pentatonic scale starting there is an A minor pentatonic. So if someone's playing in A minor, that you can find that there. If someone's playing in A major, you're able to play by putting your pinky on that A note and playing the pentatonic from that point. So someone's playing in. So again, those two skills work hand in hand, the, the bending and the knowing where the notes are. Kind of a, a bonus tip, I guess. If you've enjoyed this video and you want to see more of this kind of content, leave me a thumbs up down below so that I know to do more tutorial things. And as I said before, if you're interested in guitar and music related content here on YouTube and you haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so because it helps this channel to grow and it helps my videos get seen by more people. If you're interested in this guitar that I've been using today in this video, you can hit that card above my shoulder to go and watch my review of the Nova Go. And finally, if you've got any tips or anything that you think that I've missed, leave them in the comments section down below and let me know uh, what you think beginner guitarists should focus on when they're to level up to the next level. Thanks for watching. I've been Lee Townsend and I'll catch you in the next one. I'll see you next week. Bye bye.